Hi, and welcome to this presentation about how to use Enscape or Lumion to present building models to your client or in a competition. So the agenda will be that I will say something about modeling tools versus rendering tools, application and interface in Enscape and Lumion. And I will go through a workflow from where you have an existing model to a rendering in Enscape. After that, I'll introduce Lumion. And finally, I'll look into license on those two software programs when you are a student at the VIA University College. As you can see, there is a lot of different tools for rendering. And this is only a small list of, of what you can find out there for rendering. Up here, you can see some of the software types for 2D and 3D design. Software programs for designing, not necessarily a good software for rendering. So Enscape and Lumion will not be a modeling tool. So the workflow will be that we model in SketchUp or Revit, and, and then we take that model into Enscape or Lumion. We can then create videos, images, panoramas, and even virtual reality. So the application and interface, if we look at Lumion, will be an independent program but with this menu in Revit, you can export your model directly into Lumion and live update your model. That means you can live sync. So if you change something in your Revit model, it will be updated automatically in uh, Lumion. Enscape is a bit different because everything works from inside Revit. That means that you'll get a tab in Revit where you can control everything. Um, when you press uh, start live update, then you'll get an extra window floating on top of Revit, you can say. So as soon as you update something in your Revit model, it will be updated in the Enscape view as you see it here. So be aware that working with computer graphics requires a lot of computer power. As you can see here, it requires large computers with a lot of RAM and powerful processors and graphic cards. You can see when I'm running a benchmark on my PC here, this is uh, on Lumion. My computer right now is too slow for working in uh, Lumion. So now I'll describe the workflow coming from an existing model to uh, a nice rendering. So it requires those uh, workflow steps as you see them here. First of all, it requires a very nice and detailed Revit model. Then no rendering without real materials. This is an example of a Peterson tile. So that will show the precise image of the manufacturer of a specific brick. Um, then you cannot have nice renderings without uh, adding objects. If we go one step back, when I say objects, that is uh, real trees, that is people, footballs, whatever, furnitures. Then I'll say something about uh, cameras and uh, lighting. That can be artificial lighting or sunlight, natural light. So when those steps are done, then we can begin to create videos, images, panoramas or virtual reality. But we need to go through those uh, steps and every one of them is, uh, is very, very important. So I'll go through some of the steps in creating nice rendering. And first of all, most important you can say is that you have a, a good, a solid and consistent and detailed Revit model. So I have here uh, the building from, from the Revit book. In this uh, model here, there are already some, some good details in this uh, model here. So for example, uh, what I will focus on here will be this uh, fascia that we have, this parapet profile on top of, of uh, the roof. Um, so though it's it's only five millimeter uh, thick and 60 millimeter high 
it will give a nice effect and I'll show you that when I start up uh, the rendering uh, in a while. So I'll speed up the video a bit and, and show you very fast what those, for example, fascia can be, uh, how they can be used. The way that, that they work, uh, as you can see here, is that they will be attached to uh, roof edges. Um, and the way that you create um, a new fascia will be based on a profile. Um, you'll find profiles under families. Um, here you see the different profiles that we have in the project. And this 5 by 120 millimeter fascia, um, uh, the profile for that will be found under profile. So you can, um, you can right click on fascia and then say edit profile. And you see this is just four lines in a 2D environment. And that will then become the fascia in the end. Another one will be uh, under wall is, is quite similar. You can add a wall sweep or you can add a recess to, for example, the wall uh, by wall reveal. And it works the same way that we have um, a profile. You can see it's the default profile. So if you want to have a special recess on your wall, you can create it here. So that is one way of adding detail to your Revit model. Another way of adding detail to uh, this Revit model will be, for example, as I have done here, um, the ceiling in the living room, I have divided that into two different ceilings, or as you can see, one of, of the components here uh, is actually a roof. So the outer part will be a plain um, gypsum board and the middle part will be um, some sound reduction um, gypsum board. Um, I'll show that later on when we turn on materials. So I have an area and I have another area inside and I will create the opening in that roof. And then I have added um, a ceiling in the middle. So now we here uh, and have opened the building with the, the, the 3D section box. Let's talk about um, the lighting fixtures that you see in uh, this ceiling. So when you turn off the, the daylight, when, when you adjust the, the time of day uh, into night, lighting fixtures, the artificial light will uh, light up um, your model. So under <clears throat> system, you'll find electrical part. And since they're grayed out, it's because that we cannot insert them in a, in a 3D view. So I open the ceiling view um, and ceiling view, ceiling plans will be where we have a horizontal section and we'll be looking up. Um, you have been used to working on floor plans where we have a, a horizontal section in the building model and looking down. So when I start to place, for example, this uh, trimmed downlight, um, it can be placed on different faces. As you can see in the top, it can be placed on a vertical face. That could be a wall. It could be placed on a face or it could be placed on a work plane. And it, in this case, since we're looking up, I can then place them on a ceiling. I can load more families. Um, if you go one step back from the Dan EDU content, um, you have all the pre-installed families coming with the Revit installation, and you'll find uh, a lot of both external and internal uh, lighting fixtures. But it can be hard to find out when should we stop adding details to this uh, 3D model. Here I have, uh, of course, added uh, gutters and downpipes, and that will give a, a really nice effect um, on the rendering. But, but if I should continue adding uh, 3D components to this view, I might look at uh, the garden wall, as you see here, the top of the garden wall, and also underneath the window, the window sill, uh, I would add 
3D uh, objects here to create um, a realistic uh, effect. So, next step will be to look at materials. Of course, that might be next after a, a good 3D geometry. That might be uh, very, very important to have uh, nice materials. So, we will have a look at that uh, now. First of all, I would look at the standard materials that comes with the Revit installation before I begin to look at custom-made materials. As you can see, this view is pretty much made out of custom-made materials. So the brick wall, um, the, the, the wooden flooring uh, outside here, and also the floors and the ceilings inside the building will be custom-made. So first of all, I'll take a look at um, the, the standard materials that comes with the Revit. For example, this uh, terrace floor or this roof, um, um, this asphalt felt uh, roof. So let's try to open up the building so we can see inside the building and then have a look at uh, our internal walls, for example, because that is um, it's just a pure white material. Um, so let's have a look at that material. It's no need for creating custom-made uh, materials um, when it's just a, a pure uh, white uh, wall. So I select one of the walls, press edit type, and then uh, I can apply the material uh, or open the material browser. It can also be found under Manage and Materials. Uh, you'll find the same uh, material here, and that was the, the default wall material. So when we are creating realistic renderings, uh, we need to look at um, how the material appears uh, under the Appearance tab. Um, so right here, you can see that, that this is a, a pretty straightforward wall paint. Um, it's a matte finish um, and it's applied with a brush. Um, let's try to have a look at what we can find um, um, on other materials. So I can open um, the asset browser as you find here. Um, under the appearance uh, folder here you'll find uh, all the different standard materials. Um, on the wall paint you can choose between glossy and matte. Um, and on the matte you'll see that you have a lot of uh, different standard uh, materials. So we can try to find something else than just a pure white. So let's take this uh, this flat antique white and then apply that uh, to default uh, to the default wall. And as you can see when I press apply here or when I close this, instead of this pure white uh, colored walls we'll now have uh, yeah, white antique. Um, before I talked about uh, the ceiling in this uh, living room, um, here you can see that the middle part of this uh, ceiling is, uh, is a noise reduction uh, gypsum board. And uh, on the outer side we have this, uh, this just plain white um, gypsum board. So if I again say edit type and I open uh, the material browser, it has this uh, Danish name uh, uh, Gips, which will be gypsum. Um, to this, uh, to this gypsum uh, wall, I have applied. Um, actually, I have applied uh, an image, and that will just be a very, very small uh, image, uh, a white colored uh, image applied to this material. Um, and if we look at the middle part, and uh, the noise reduction part, again. I select uh, the ceiling, press edit type to enter the material browser. It's called uh, Guproc. Um, and under appearance, I have, uh, I guess, on, on the internet, I have found um, 
one sixty by sixty millimeter uh, image. Uh, as you can see it here, this image. Um, I know this is uh, this is one um, one board sixty by sixty centimeter uh, board, and I can then. Uh, when I click on the image here, I can then scale that image um, 600 by 600 millimeter. So I know it has the, the correct uh, size and it will be repeated uh, besides and, and uh, on top of each other onto this uh, surface that we have uh, made, this ceiling surface. The bump map is where if you want to have an effect that that this is actually holes in the ceiling then we can apply uh, yeah the same uh, image um, and then we can control that that it appears like having holes in it and in the same way i have made this uh, peterson tile uh, brick um, material so it's the brick D72 both inside and outside on the appearance tab I have added this image as you see it here I have calculated or I have counted uh, the number of bricks both uh, yeah horizontal and vertically um, I know the size of one brick and that gives me the dimension of uh, this image 3120 by 2 meter and I have added that uh, to the scale and of course I have uh, added that uh, repeat so it should tile both uh, horizontal and uh, vertically. So here it's not named uh, bump map but relief pattern but that will give you the, give you the same effect a black and white uh, colored image where all the black will be the joint between the bricks and the white area will be uh, the image without any relief pattern. I guess you can see it here that, that it has the effect that the joint is uh, set a bit back from, uh, from the facade. And here on, on a larger facade, uh, you can actually, if you look very closely, you can see that it has this seam between uh, the tiles but it's not uh, very visible so it's it's actually quite good made from uh, from peterson tile it's it's actually taken from that website let's try something funny here um, in the end of of the material uh, part if we want to add a sign uh, on this gable um, let's make this uh, uh, a department of uh, via uh, Aarhus, this building here. So I'll apply that uh, to the gable here, just for showing you how you can create a material <clears throat> from scratch. Um, so I don't want to have that. <clears throat> that uh, the depth will be twenty millimeter. And if I if I click uh, the by material to enter the material browse browser I can then create um, a new material uh, since I tried this one time before then sign will be taken so I name this uh, sign one um, just to show you yeah, that you can actually work with uh, not only materials but also emissive materials like uh, LED um, uh, yeah colors uh, so you have this effect uh, as as uh, led lights it's, it's it's not possible to see that uh, right here but uh, i'll promise uh, that i'll show the, show you that when we turn on um, the enscape view and the final material i'll i'll mention here will be the grass material and and i'll come back to that uh, in a while when we begin to uh, start up Enscape, we'll do that right after this. But you'll see that that um, the standard material in Revit uh, doesn't look very nice. It, it doesn't look like grass, but, uh, but I would say it, it looks more like a, like a carpet. Um, but we'll come back to that uh, in a while. 
Yes. Um, let, let's try to to start up Enscape um, so you can see um, how it works. So as you can see, when I drag this or makes this uh, Revit view a bit smaller and start up um, the Enscape window, it will float on top of, of Revit, you can say. So two different uh, windows we have here. Um, I can choose in between different uh, perspective modes, so I, I take this two-point uh, perspective. So already now you can see that, that it, it actually has a much more realistic view uh, when we look at the model uh, through the Enscape view. So this was um, what I started saying something about uh, the fascia. As you can see, it, it actually gives an, a nice uh, shadow effect uh, at the, the edges of, uh, of the roof. And also um, the downpipes uh, will, will cast some very nice shadows uh, on the facade. Um, yeah, right now I'm in, in fly mode. Um, here you can see the ceiling, uh, the noise reduction uh, gypsum board in the middle and the plane gypsum board uh, in the sides and my uh, lighting fixtures. Um, so right now I'm, as I said, I'm in, in fly mode, I guess. Yes, you can see the uh, the wings in, in the view. So right now I can go through walls, uh, I can go through the roof, roofs, uh, etc. So um, there are no limits uh, about that. So let's try to start looking at what I talked about uh, just before. Um, the grass, as you can see, it's much more realistic as you see it in, uh, in Revit. Um, so we have different um, settings for the grass. So if I go into Revit, remember as soon as you change something in your Revit model, it will be updated in your Enscape view. So if I start up the material browser and find the grass, the site grass material, um, you'll see that, that when I change the name right now, the name of this uh, material will be site grass. Um, if I change that name to, um, to, to for example, um, let's try to write tall grass. Um, then you can see that, that the grass will will be tall so to say so actually we have grass underneath the terrace and that will then go through uh, the concrete tiles so another opportunity we have is to add uh, wild grass then it's uh, it's a bit shorter and finally we have short grass and and that will be if you have uh, if you have a, a garden and then that will be the grass type that you should uh, choose here. So short grass will then you give you some, some very short grass. Yeah. I'll change this uh, back to wild grass. That was uh, the middle length of, um, of this grass. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to jump back into my Enscape view here. Um, still uh, in fly mode, so right now I can, I can fly through uh, walls, uh, casework, etc. I just want to go through um, the walls and uh, show you the sign that we have uh, on this gate, or the sign that we created on the gable. You can see when I'm in walk mode, I cannot go through um, through walls, so I need to go through doors or openings in uh, in walls. So that was the sign that we created. Um, in the menu here, you can see that I can change the time of day by holding my right uh, sh um, mouse 
button and the shift key on my keyboard to adjust the, the time of day to, for example, in the middle of the night. Now it's, uh, it's five in the morning. And uh, this emissive material that I applied to this uh, sign will then actually also light up uh, some of uh, the model. And now you can really see that, that um, the lighting fixtures that we have uh, in the model will be very visible and, and light up uh, the inside of, um, of the model. But no nice rendering without any objects, trees, people, furniture, um, all sorts of uh, accessories uh, will just make this rendering perfect. So let's have a look at how we add objects to this rendering. Um, so when we add, remember that when we work in Revit, uh, in this view, because this press 2 view is what I see here in Enscape. Remember, every time I update something in this view, um, it would take out performance of your PC because Enscape is set to, to update live all the time. So it's a good idea to pause that live updates while we're working in Revit. So honestly, I have uh, cheated a bit um, so I have hidden a lot of uh, objects here while we were working on the modeling part and the materials part uh, so far, the, the recent uh, minutes. So as you can see here, I have added uh, a lot of trees. If I turn on, for example, consistent color here, you'll see that uh, I have a, a topography here where I have a road going through this area. I have um, a river coming here with the uh, with water and um, if I go to massing and side and turn on uh, masses you'll see that I have uh, added a few um, of the surrounding buildings as just uh, pure uh, white solids so if I go back to this view here and then I'll turn on um, a few of the categories uh, at the time um, because what you have done so far with the knowledge that you have had uh, from from whatever you have learned so far will be that you under architect, uh, architecture have added um, a lot of uh, different families for example uh, bookshelf uh, shower uh, tables, chairs, whatever, trees also, uh, these uh, RPC trees. And they work uh, quite good actually um, together with, uh, with Enscape. So if I press Escape here and I go to Visibility Graphics and turn on, for example, the Furniture category, let's see what we have here. And that is actually all the furnitures that came with um, uh, with with the Revit uh, model from scratch. So, if I on the Enscape uh, resume live updates here, and we take a walk into the building. Let's turn on day again, like this. Um, you'll see those furnitures that we have here will be the one that that comes with, uh, with, with Revit automatically, what you have created, if you have been through um, the Revit book uh, so far. What is relatively new in Enscape is that uh, they have added it, this uh, asset library. So um, nearly 1600 different assets, people, vehicles, whatever you can add to, um, to this model. So again, if I go into visibility graphics here and turn on, for example, entourage uh, planting, I guess that's it. 
then you'll see I have added some um, some some assets here, and if we go into Enscape when it has finished updating, yes, um, you'll see we have those uh, assets here, quite quite detailed uh, assets, and. Combined with the grass material here, it, it just looks uh, very, very nice that the football are, are in the grass. So you can actually create some, some very, very nice, realistic looking renderings, adding all those uh, assets to your model. So right now, what we have uh, been looking at so far is, is only that small part because I have added this section box. If I turn on uh, the southwest view um, and if we then here instead of press 2 say that we want to see exterior southwest then it just needs to update and then it will show all the planting and everything that we have uh, here besides. So take a look how objects, everything that is not only the building part is very important for creating nice renderings. So here I have added some of the environment uh, on my own, so planting and, and those uh, surrounding Buildings will be uh, added uh, automatically. Um, if you look at the horizon over here, uh, you can uh, add different um, types of atmosphere. If I go into settings, uh, visual settings, then I can add under atmosphere, I can change Let's see if we can have both open here. It's not possible, so I need to adjust this. Then you can see we can um, we can change different uh, horizons here. So if if, um, if the background should be in the middle of the forest, you can add that. And as you can see here, we can also add our own skyboxes if we take a photo, a 360 degree photo on the building site. That is actually also possible. Yes, um, I just want to comment on what I see very often when you're creating your project material. Um, if we go to the sheets here and I open um, that output uh, drawing that I have here meant for the client. Um, I have added a car here and, and those objects I have added here, you can say, or you can see that that uh, uh, this is the barbecue here, and this is uh, the person sitting here. And if I print this, that will just be one big um, black spot, you can say, and, and it doesn't look very nice on documentation drawing. So remember to hide those objects when you create ground floor plans, site plans, or whatever. Um, it, it, it looks stupid having those uh, black spots in your documentation drawing outputs. Then just a few comments on lighting and camera to create this, uh, this perfect uh, rendering. So first of all, something about um, the camera setting. So uh, here on the camera, you can place a camera. So now you have a camera at the tip of, of your mouse here. You can adjust before you place it, you can adjust uh, the off offset distance from uh, a level. Um, I can uh, place it, I can drag where I want to see uh, my target. Um, I press escape now because I want to reuse this um, southwest perspective that I have. If you want to adjust a perspective, you can 
On this side, you can right click over Southwest and then say show camera. That will then give you the camera position of this perspective here, and I can then adjust it. But I will uh, use uh, this perspective here. The sun setting. Um, there is a few options on creating that under manage. If you go into location, um, you can set the location on the planet um, uh, here, or you can under uh, graphic display option here, under lighting and sun setting, um, you can then under uh, solar study still uh, go to the same um, uh, place where you can add the, the, the location so you can change it here to Aarhus or, or wherever you are or want to be and that will then give you the correct uh, altitude uh, angle and so on uh, of the sun uh, in that specific area, um, on a specific date, at a specific uh, time. So now everything is finished, so materials, model, objects are placed, everything is perfect. Now we need to create the final output. So if I want to create a still image for, for example, uh, printing or post or whatever, um, then what I can do is I, that using my, my left mouse um, button here and, and the keyboards, I can adjust my view until I find a, a nice view here. Um, under setting visual graphics, um, capture, you can decide um, the res resolution of this image that you are creating here. Uh, I'll just create a, a low um, resolution here for, for making it uh, faster. Um, it's saved here in this folder that you can, you can decide. Um, uh, the rendering, what is the rendering quality? Is a draft, medium, high, ultra, whatever. Um, I can export this. No, I can uh, take a screenshot. So I can render image that will, uh, the rendering will then be placed in the folder uh, here in, in Revit. Or if I take a screenshot, it will then create um, a nice and crispy uh, image uh, according to the, the resolution that that you decided uh, early on. And that image will then be placed in that specific folder and it looks like this then. That was the low quality that I just uh, created. And if I want to create a video, <coughs> then I can turn on this video editor here in my Enscape view. Start by adding a keyframe. Um, maybe I'll remove all. And then I'll jump into walk mode. That is, that is better. So this is, this is my first view. So I add a, like a keyframe. Uh, there it is, and then I use my keyboard and my mouse to create the next step on my path here. I cannot go through walls when I'm on walk mode, so I'll add a new keyframe here. Move on. Let's go outside again. Like this. Short video here. And that will be my final uh, keyframe. Let's see how that looks. Mm. 
almost okay. I say this is uh, this is uh, this is okay. So yeah, as you can see, I can I can add some shaky camera. I can uh, I have applied easing out uh, in and out. What is the total duration of uh, this uh, video? I say that is uh, that is perfect now, and I can then render um, the video to an MP4 format for the use in online presentations. And as you can see, depending on the quality uh, of this video, that can actually take up some time to create this, uh, this small video. Enough about Revit and Enscape, and uh, as promised uh, in the beginning, I'll just say a few words about Lumion and how you can create your renderings in Lumion. It will be a separate program. You're not working inside Revit, so you need to export your Revit model uh, so it, it can be read in, uh, in Lumion. So you can, you can import all sorts of, uh, of uh, files, uh, SketchUp files, Revit files, and whatever. You can then insert them into um, uh, a plain environment. Uh, this example uh, is using, uh, yeah, it's it's not as you can see Northern uh, Europe, but but it's it's a template from uh, America, I guess. But all the objects that you see in this uh, project here, you can in the lower left uh, corner of Lumion, you can add uh, trees, people. Uh, cars, uh, furnitures, whatever, and, and also the cars and uh, bicycles, uh, the people, you can animate them. Um, uh, so so it, it creates some very, very nice realistic uh, renderings. Um, you can, uh, of course, create all um, the, the different... Uh, uh, still images for your posters, etc., and you can create um, environments and and videos, uh, and you can you can add atmosphere as well. Uh, so sunset, um, snow, rain, whatever you can apply uh, wind to the trees, etc. So uh, no doubt that uh, Lumion is uh, is a high end. Uh, rendering uh, engine. So about download and license uh, when you are a student at the VIA University College, then you can apply for licenses if you follow this uh, link here, or you can just Google uh, student Enscape um, uh, educational uh, license. <clears throat> um, the download size will be approximately 170 megabyte. Maybe it's a bit more now since they have added all their assets. Um, and then you can um, fill out this form here and apply for a student license. And that will, as far as I remember it, uh, it will work on uh, in, in one year, and then you have to apply for a new license. Um, Lumion is a bit different. Um, if uh, if you're uh, on the school server, or maybe via uh, VPN, um, in the folder software for students, you can find uh, Lumion. Um, it's not the latest version of Lumion you'll find here. Um, I think it's right now it's 8.3. You can apply for the nearest release if you write an email to Lumion at uh, symmetry.com um, and then attach a photo of your uh, student card. Then you'll get access um, to the newest version. And remember that uh, the download size will be approximately 9 or 10 gigabytes, so it's a bit different from uh, Enscape. 